So let's take a look at how Druva can radically simplify cloud-based DR of VMs both on-premise or in VMC with our orchestrated and automated DR as a service and failback. So here we see the Druva dashboard. I'm going to jump directly into the Phoenix solution. From here, we see summary information, what workloads we're protecting, how much source data, the changes, the post dedupe data set that ultimately drives consumption and cost out of the Druva system. I'm going to jump down to an organization here where we'll see a visual diagram of the workloads that we support. With VMware, it's very simple. You deploy an OVF template. This is a small Linux-based VM, 100 gigs, 4 to 8 gigs of RAM, 1 to 2 vCPUs. This proxy is used to make an API call to vCenter, pull in the snapshot, cross-reference the data directly in your instance, and then run the deduplication, and then send the unique data directly through port 443 encrypted through TLS 1.2. Now, once the data is in the environment, from deploying that proxy and sending the unique data to Druva, where you're only paying for the post dedupe data set and there's no egress cost to pull data out, you can also deploy a proxy directly into your own VPC within AWS. With this connection to your AWS VPC, you can then create an orchestrated DR plan, which designates boot order and instance type and networking settings. So with one click, you'll be able to fail over what was an on-prem or VMC VMDK converted into an AMI, into an Amazon machine uh, EC2 instance. So to register this proxy, it's very straightforward. There's actually a cloud formation stack that you run through where you designate the region, the um, instance type, the networking, the subnet, and then click deploy. So it's very straightforward. A lot of the work's already been done for you. Once you deploy that proxy, then you go and create the DR plan. So let's jump into that. So here you can see the AWS proxy has been deployed, and here's some DR plans that we've already created. Now, if I click on demo DR plan, you'll see the VMs that are included in this failover, your actual recovery point, your last time the DR was restored. So you can see as well, every time a backup comes through, it'll immediately replicate and update that EC2 instance. You can also see the workflow here in terms of recovery, boot order, time delay. You can even set scripts to test validation of this as well. Now, when I go to our DR plan, I have two options on failover, production and test. A test failover would go to potentially an isolated VPC that's not connected to any network for QA and, and dev. Production failover obviously would go into a VPC where you have networking pre-configured for a production scenario. And here's that boot order, that workflow. I can go and just select an individual system to fail over as well. And so now that that system has failed over, I go into EC2, I can get the public IP, and then through an RDP session, I can connect directly to it. It's that easy. And so now you have your VMware environment running as EC2 instances in AWS without any upfront capital costs building out colos or working with a private cloud. Now this is only half of the battle, right? Getting the instance failed over is very important. But not just failover. What happens once you've rebuilt your local data center? We actually have an orchestrated fail back feature as well. That will then convert the EBS snapshots back into a VMDK. But all of the changes that happened while those instances were live are captured and maintained and brought back during a maintenance window. So that there's no data loss. You can keep your business running smoothly. And Druva is here to help make that happen. With Druva, your data is always on and always ready. Thanks so much.